So I'm looking forward to giving you a note to tell you about here on this Monday. And again, coming up in a matter of minutes from the band Blackstone Cherry, guitarist Ben Wells will join us. Look forward to talking to him about the band's new album, which is called The Human Condition. It's a really good record. I think it's their sixth album, which is hard to believe because I still think of them as a newer band. Uh, we'll talk to Ben for a little bit. And you guys that are on hold, keep holding if you want. Or we'll tell you when to call in. We'll get some phone calls on in the second hour as well uh, after we wrap up with Ben. So if you want to jump on the air about anything, you will have an opportunity in hour number two of the show. But the other news is Iron Maiden. And there's a few things going on with Iron Maiden. There are rumors of a new studio record being worked on, which I have said all along. If you are a band that is creative and writes and records music and you want to release and make new music and you aren't doing it now, you're never going to do it. If you are a fan that is looking forward to new music from an artist you haven't gotten it from in a long time and you don't get it coming off of this pandemic, it's probably because they don't want to. And don't feel like making new music <laughs> because there's never been a better time to do it because there's nothing else they can do. And there's rumors. Another band that's very tight lipped until they have to say something is Iron Maiden. And there's rumors Iron Maiden are working on new music. But one of the things they are doing because they had a tour canceled in the pandemic is releasing a new live record that was recorded in Mexico. Now, Iron Maiden have had a ton of live records in their career. Interestingly, they put out a collection not too long ago of remastered versions of what they feel are two of their best, Rock in Rio and the first Maiden live record, full length, Live After Death. Now they've got one from Mexico that is coming out on November 20th. And it is the traditional double live record. And the band has said, hey, look, we decided we'll... We're going to put out something live to pacify people since we can't tour. We recorded some shows in Mexico, which is a stronghold for metal. And I'm sure the audience was rabid. And they said, we're going to put this out in the interim while we wait to see when we can tour again. So another Maiden Live record coming out in a few weeks. And they do, uh, it's from the Legacy of the Beast tour, which was a very celebrated tour by Maiden fans and a great tour. I saw a couple shows on it myself. And that is where this is taken from. We don't know if they shot the tour. We don't know if there will be at some point down the line an accompanying concert video from the tour. I think they still want to resume the tour when they're able to do it. But in the meantime, CD, vinyl, streaming, there will be this live document coming out on November 20th. Uh, like I said, recorded live in Mexico and front and around it. What a great guy. Great band. And I want to mention, uh, he just sent me a text. His, he, he mentioned he started a clothing line, Surf Monster. And, he, and I wanted to throw a, a mention out to that. If you want to check out that website, it's surfmonsterstore.com to check out the clothing line. And th these artists, I mean, they've got to do this stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a way to be creative, but it's also a way to make some extra money in, in what's a really tough time. But it's, it's very cool to see they've got a show this Friday. And there are, I, I've been saying this consistently during this whole lockdown. There are places and ways and bands doing shows. It's not touring. It's not a consistent uh, run of dates. It's not going out there doing a 30, a 30 date run or a 60 date run. You just can't do that right now because you can't string enough cities together to make it work financially and find enough dates out there. And there's not enough places that are open and can do shows, but you can find pockets that you can do one or two certain ways, whether they're outdoor venues or certain States where the uh, virus isn't as rampant or the, they're a little more loose with the laws of, of what's going on in that state. So it's where those opportunities are there. These bands are going to jump in there and do it. And you can't blame them for doing it because it's their livelihood. It's what they do. And it's a ripple effect. It's not just for the band. It's for whatever fans choose to want to go. But it's also great for crews, the bus drivers, the bus people that rent the buses, the venues themselves, the managers, the agents, the people that run the venues, the people that serve drinks in the venues. 
It's just it's a it's a laundry list of people that are impacted above and beyond the band. So anytime bands can find a way to actually do something out there, it's a it's a really great and important thing until we can get to a point where they can can go out and play. And it's remarkable. We just heard from from Ben. This guy is uh, this band headlines arenas in Europe. Arenas. I, that that disparity has always just blown my mind of how that works, where an, an American band can you know play to five hundred people as a headliner in America, or whatever they can do, a thousand, and then they go to England or Germany and they play to ten, fifteen thousand people. That would be a hard. I understand. And look, he's a great guy. Obviously, you could hear it. I mean, they're just great. they're really really good people, but. <laughs> That would be a tough thing to get your head around. And I know he said he doesn't care. He just likes to play. And I believe him. But that that would be rough to go from playing to Wembley Arena, which is basically the Madison Square Garden of England. And then you're, you're back here and you're, you know, you're playing a you know, club. I mean, it's it, it's crazy. But the nice thing is, if you're in that situation where you do that kind of business, in another part of the world, you're making real money when you tour there. You're making big money. So when you tour in America, even if you're playing uh, clubs or small theaters as a headliner, because you're making money outside of the world, big money, then you can use that to your benefit when you tour in the U.S., meaning you can stay in nicer hotels, you can maybe have a couple buses, a little more extra room out there. You can travel way more comfortably because of the money you make when you're touring in another part of the world, playing much bigger places. There's a few bands that I've seen that happen to. People are like, how the hell is this band playing a club out there with two, three buses and a big crew like this and traveling like this and staying in these hotels? Well, because... They can go to Japan or South America or Europe and they get way, way bigger audiences. Great guys. You can't not root for that band. I'm telling you, they're really, I, I've, I've been, I don't think I've ever had anybody from the band on one of my shows, but I see them at all these festivals. I go watch them play. We always have great conversations backstage talking for a little bit. And for whatever reason, however reason, it never connected that we got anybody from the band on the show so I'm glad we finally did because uh, they're, they're great people and just a real rock band. You know how I root for the real guys. And he referenced it, meaning the guys that play live. That is a wild story he told. <laughs> Loading in and the guy's like, oh, I haven't seen anybody with actual cabinets. And what he means by that is there's, there's people that don't bring amps. Sure, you see amps on stage, but they're not even real. They're running through electronics. It's just, it's ridiculous. So... That's what it's about, man. That's what a real live rock and roll band is all about, in my book at least. All right, we are late for a break. I got to get another one in. We'll come back. We'll grab a few calls as we get ready to this round in our final hour here before we wrap up for the week. This one comes from a regular emailer, Ruben Gonzalez. He writes, do you think Iron Maiden will change maybe one or two songs in their set list? I think Somewhere in Time is underrated, and my favorite on that album is Heaven Can Wait. Well, Ruben, Heaven Can Wait was a big song in Iron Maiden's set for many, many years. As a matter of fact, they used to do this thing where they would invite friends or members of the opening act out on the stage to do that part where it goes, whoa, whoa, that big sing-along. You were able to run out, gather around a microphone, and then run off the stage. I actually did it a couple times. So it's been in the set. Whether it is on the upcoming tour, I don't know. Iron Maiden traditionally, when they put a set list together, does not change at all. Show in and show out. Once they set their set list, that's the set list for the whole tour. So if history continues, no, they probably won't change anything. But uh, anything's possible. But usually once they lock in, they lock in. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. One is that the timing is down. The band has rehearsed those songs. And also, Iron Maiden, of course, put on a huge stage production. 
And when you change songs, it alters the backdrop.